Hi, I'm Winston. Welcome to the Real Estate Template, where there's so much more to real estate investing than just houses and buildings and land. We're going to teach you how to run numbers. We're going to teach you how to understand your investments. We're going to teach you how to be comfortable and get security in your investments. Because if you aren't secure in your investment, your investment will stress you out to no end. I'm going to start off with talking about capital expenditures. On our last video, we did a video on cap rate. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I need you to back up and I need you to watch that video before watching this video because it is the first piece of this pie. I did not have a capital expenditure in my video last week. This week, I wanted to put one in it so I could explain to you exactly what it was, exactly how it works. So a capital expenditure is if you have capital expenditures that will be coming out of a property within the next five years, then you should be including them in your numbers as you run them on a yearly basis to give you a true reading of your total profitability. That money should be going into an account designated to that specific repair so that you do not have to dig into your pockets to come up with the money all at one time at the end. So let's say you have a roof. You get three bids on the roof. The roof is going to cost you $8,000 to replace. If that roof is going to cost you $8,000 to replace, maybe you got enough money. You can just pull it out, pay for the roof. No big deal. That's fine. But if you are an investor that's starting out and you're trying to make money, you may not have $8,000 that you can dig into your pocket for. You may need to come up and say, I got to figure out how to do this. I have five years to put this new roof on my house and I need the money. That is what I'm talking about here. What I would do at that particular point in time is I would say, okay, if my roof is going to be $8,000, I would divide that by eight years, or I'm sorry, I would divide that by five years. Eight years, if you can't afford, if you want to do it over that period of time, that's up to you. But we're going to use five years as our example in this, in this video. So I would divide that by five years. So 8,000 divided by five is $1,600 a year. And then I would take, and I would take that $1,600 a year, and I would put that into a separate account on a monthly basis and have that money at the end of the five years so that I can just write a check and it does not affect me personally to go in there and put that money on that roof. What is a capital expenditure? A capital expenditure is an air conditioning unit, a roof, flooring, siding, painting, lighting, a water heater. It can be almost anything. So everybody takes a capital expenditure and they look at it from a different perspective. For me and my accounting purposes, anything over $2,500, that's going to be a capital expenditure for me. I'm going to track that cost. I'm going to give that cost to my attorney, not my attorney, but my accountant. When I give that cost to my accountant, my accountant is then going to take that and he's going to do depreciation on it, which means we discussed that in a previous video. The depreciation Depreciation is going to give me the ability to write that expense off for 27 and a half years on my profits of my company. So it is important to understand what a capital expenditure is, how to track it, and what to do with it. So last week when we ran our numbers, we ran our numbers like this right here. We did not have a capital expenditure in anything. There was no, no place for it. My profit margin came out on a yearly basis to 8.3%. So this week I added capital improvements for a roof for $8,000 at $1,600. So when I added that in there, I I'm going to do this for a five year period of time, which is going to change my profit for that five years to 7.7% cap rate. That's all you got to do. You track it. If you're running numbers, we were talking last week about our whole purpose for running our numbers is so that we can know whether our deal is profitable, whether we're going to make the money that we say we're going to make on this deal or whether we're going to not make the money. And we discussed over and over and over the importance of not lying about your numbers, not trying to make it look better than what it is, because when you do, you will fail in the end. We are not in the times we were five years ago. We are in 2023. Numbers are important. And if you make a mistake, it could be the, the difference between you keeping the property or you losing the property because you can't pay your bills. Diagnose every single number. All right. So today we're going to talk about cash on cash. So what is cash on cash? The cash on cash return is the ratio of annual before tax. So it's your money before you pay any taxes on it. It's before tax cash flow to the amount of cash invested expressed in a percentage. Okay. So basically you put $5,000 in a deal and you get $500 a year off of it. You're making 10% cash on cash. We're going to look at that right there and we're going to diagnose it and I'm going to help you understand it. So we're going to take the same deal we did the other day. We bought a home, $200,000. We had 3% closing costs, $6,000. We figured in our bid as we was making our offer on a house that we was going to have to put $48,000 into that house for the deal to make sense. For us to be able to put a good quality renter in it, 
For us to be able to make it make money, we had to put a little bit more investment in it. So that number was 48,000, which gives us a total cost of $254,000 in that whole deal. So our, so our investment in the deal right now, if we were gonna pay cash for it, would be $254,000. Now we're gonna talk about cash on cash, okay? It's a little bit different. So on this scenario, I'm gonna add something in here called carrying costs. Because when I make a loan and I'm going to do a $48,000 repair, that repair may take me two months. So in that two-month period of time, I'm going to be paying my loan, whatever that number is. I'm going to be paying utilities on that, whatever that is. I'm going to have taxes for those two months that are included. I'm going to have insurance for those two months that are included. So for me, I am using this number of $3,000 as what my carrying cost is going to be on that property in order to make this deal work. This is the old deal here. All of the numbers are the same. We had the $200,000, we had a $254,000. The whole difference is only the fact that I added another $3,000 here in the carrying costs. The reason I'm showing you this right here, because I want to show you that when we did something on a cap rate, when we switch it to a cash on cash, there's not a lot of difference in it, but there's a little bit. So now I got my carrying costs. So I'm going to finance $254,000. In order to do that, I'm going to put 10% down, which is going to be $24,400. Okay. That's money coming out of my pocket. That money is going into the deal. $24,400. Now in this scenario, my total out of pocket, my total out of pocket will be $28,400. It's the 3,000 carrying costs, $25,400 for the deposit. And the rest of the money is going to be handled by the bank. So that'll be the bank's money. So we are going to finance $228,600. We're going to put $28,400 out of our pocket. $228,000 belongs to the bank. This is an app. If you Google this right here, or not Google it, but if you put it on your app for whatever phone you use, it's R-E-M-I-I-I-X. I'm going to do a little short video. We're going to break. I'm going to bring you to my iPad. I'm going to show you how this app, this app works for figuring out how to find out how much a loan is going to cost you. And then we will go from there. All right. So now we're going to go to the app. This is on my iPad. So you'll see an app right at the very bottom in the bar. That says R-E-M-I-I-X. I'm going to press that app. That's going to bring up my real estate investment calculator. I'm going to hit the clear button two times because you want to clear out anything that might be in this memory. So as we are doing our numbers, we had $228,600 that we wanted to finance. That money, I'm going to hit the, the loan amount on the left-hand side here. We're going to hit loan amount. So that's the loan amount. Now I'm going to hit 30, 30. And that's going to be the term. So it's going to be 30 years is what I'm going to be the annual term. Okay. So now we're going to figure that loan at 6% interest. So I'm going to press 6. And then I'm going to press the button that says interest. Now all I have to do is press the button that says payment. And it's going to automatically tell me that my payment for that loan is $1,370.57 a, a month. So that's, that is that's simple to do your principal payment interest in there on any type of loan that you want to do. Now, if you look at the top hand part of it underneath the, or in the same box as your 1370, you'll see the little dollar sign. So we're going to press that dollar sign. When we press that dollar sign, that is going to give me an amortization schedule. So your amortization schedule is how much money am I going to pay every single year, which is going to be the exact same amount. But it's going to tell me, as you look at that on number one, it's going to tell me on my first year that I'm going to pay $13,639.64 in interest, and then I'm going to pay $28,007.23 in principal. So the interest is money that the bank is going to keep. The principal is money that I don't owe on the loan that I owed last year. So I started out with $28,600 on the loan, but as you can see on year number one, I now only owe $225,792. So it has, it has came down $2,807. If you go all the way down, I'm going to scroll down a little bit to year number 10, you'll notice that between year number one and year number 10, that the amount of money that I owe has dropped from $225,000 all the way down to $196,000 or $196,000. So I don't owe that much money. You can also look and see where in year number one, I was paying or receiving $2,800 a month in principal. In year number 10, I'm actually receiving $4,800 in principal. So those numbers change. And that amortization schedule will show all 30 years. You know, I get into to year number 20 and you can see right there in year number 20, 
I'm receiving $8,700 a year in principal reduction. All of that changes your numbers every single year. It changes your profit, your return on every single year for the whole 30 years. So that is just a simple way to run your numbers. It's a simple way to find out what your amortization and what, you, what you're going to be able to claim as far as your principal reduction on a yearly basis is. So play with it. Look at it. Very good app. Thank you very much. Let's go back to the video. Okay, welcome back. So we just finished talking about our mortgage calculator. Now we're going to bring it to the next step in our series of running our numbers. So now we did the $228,000 that gave us a bank payment at 6% interest for 30 years of $1,370.57. That being said, our note for the year is going to cost us $16,446. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to put our revenue in there, including our vacancy factor, which gives us $27,900 worth of revenue. Now, we have the $16,000, but remember, previously, our total expenses were $8,332. So we still got to add that $8,332 into the $16,000 for our total expenses once we take our mortgage out of our payment, out of our, our yearly revenue. So with that being said, that's going to give us a number. Total expenses, including our mortgage, is $24,778. Our total revenue with our vacancy factor is $27,900. That gives us a $3,121 a year return on our investment or 11% interest. So the return on our investment is based off of our total out-of-pocket expense, which is $28,000. In our previous video, it came out to 7.2% with the capital improvements in it. And that number was with us investing $254,000. Big difference. So you say, well, I'm not going to go through all that trouble on this house for a measly 11% return, $3,000 a year. That's just a small piece of the pie. People get so excited about this number and feel like I'm working for $300 a month, Winston. I'm not going to do that. You are not working for $300 a month. That is what your mind tells you. Let's see what your eyes can tell you. So we're going to go right back to the previous thing, and we're going to talk about what that property is throwing off, not what you're making on your cash flow. What is that property actually throwing off to you? We're going to use the same numbers. So our cash on cash rate is $3,121. That's what we're making in cash. Now we're going to use the previous number of 5% appreciation, and we've already went through this right here. You say, well, you, most people say don't put appreciation in a deal. If you go back and you look at history over the last 50 years, your appreciation is going to show up at 5% or better over a 50-year period of time. If you do it over a 10-year period of time, it's going to be a whole lot more than 5%. But that is a number that has been very consistent. Is it money you want to count on? I'm not counting on my appreciation to make my living. But that appreciation is going to show up. If I'm going to hold that property for 10 years, that appreciation is going to show up over that 10-year period of time, that 15-year period of time, or that 20-year period of time. So I am not going to leave it out of my calculations. That is part of my deal. So the next thing we get is the principal reduction. Now, I showed you when we did the numbers with the calculator how to get to see your principal reduction. So I borrowed $200,000, $200,000 plus. I borrowed that money. I then had $2,800 worth of principal reduction for that year. That money is my money. I don't owe $2,800,000 now that I owed last year. I did not pay that $2,800. My tenant paid that $2,800. So, I, you know, they pay the note. I don't pay the note. So that is profitable money, that $2,807. That's profit. I recognize that when I do a cash out refi. I recognize that if I sell the property. Other than that, it's a profit that I make that stays in the property until I pull it out. All right, so we did our depreciation at a 24% tax bracket, and that gave us $1,900. If you want to look at it more, go to the previous video and check that out. So now my yearly return on that number is not $3,121 or 11%. It is $3,121. It is $12,700. It is my principal reduction at $2,800. It is now my depreciation that I'm going to recognize every single year at $1,900. Now I have made $20,529 off of a $28,400 investment. My return on investment, actually, that property throws off. What does the property throw off? That's the total amount of money that property makes you in a year. It's what it throws off as a whole. That number is 72%. It is not 11%. If you're looking at the 11% as you have done your numbers in the past, you're leaving out so much more than what 
is really in the deal. So now we think that 72% is a pretty good return on investment. How about I show you how to turn that 72% into 500%, 500% plus, more than 500%. You think you can't do it? It is so simple, it will make your head spin. You think it can't be done? This is what you may think. Tune into the next episode and let me show you how to make 72% on a $28,000 investment turn into 500%. Welcome and thank you for being at the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it. Please subscribe to our channel and see what we got coming up next. Have a wonderful day.